Hello, this is Prophet Six, family prophet to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans. God bless you. Just wanted to, I had some things on my heart that I just wanted to share and add to this series. And uh, throughout this series, it will, I, it will be, you know that you're on the right series. Why? Because I have yellow shirt on. And uh, I, I think I began with a white shirt, but yeah, that's irrelevant, really. But uh, I'm kind of proud because um, I secured me a embroidery machine and I learned how to embroider. And the logo that you see on this shirt, I'm, I'm, I'm just, it's show and tell. OK, come on, you know, <laughs> let's have fun. This this logo that you see embroidered and, 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 and embossed on this shirt here. I did it. I'm so happy. I had a guy that was in doing my embroidery. And it was just, it was terrible. Let, let me not say any more because if I do, you know, uh, I start getting flashbacks. <laughs> but I'm, in, I'm doing my own embroidery, my own logo that God gave me in a dream. I have power over it to put it on shirts and clothing. Oh, I'm going to show you this. I did this, uh, this not on topic. I know that. But... I put this on my uh, wife's uh, purse. Don't it look nice? Look at that. It look nice, don't it? Professional. You know, not sloppy. It's really nice. So I mastered the machine. And so, and oh, by the way, this logo, if you don't know already, by going to my website, the Universal Family Flag dot com, uh, this logo is the Universal symbol for family okay but i'm not gonna get into that i'm gonna, I'm gonna do a whole video on that and uh explain that to you so and tough tough the acronym tough is an acronym that has dual meaning true the t is true unity for family that's what tough stands for it also stands for the universal family flag so this universal symbol for family, which is the actual logo, it is, um, I call it for short, the tough logo. OK, so but anyway, we're here to talk about marriage. We're here to talk about how to find a mate. And another thing I want to say, even though this is about how to find a mate, this is also about how to keep a mate. Because as high as the divorce rate is, this video needs to be infused with that idea, ideology as well. How to keep a mate. To do what? Build the kingdom. I'm going to tell you, if you, get, if you got married and it wasn't based on building the kingdom, you did the wrong thing. So what do you need to do? Get a divorce? No, no. What you need to do is say, talk to your spouse and say, hey, we need to start off on the right. Did you know that the original reason for getting married was to build the kingdom of God up out of love for God? That's the only reason to get married. All these other reasons for getting married, they're not of God. This is the main reason primary reason to get married all right now one of the things i like to address in this video is all the people all the ladies all the single christian ladies in the church that said oh i'm single and they brag about it they boast about it and they lying they are not single the bible says in the book of uh, corinthians I'm one of the Corinthians that he that is joined to a harlot is one with her. Hello. How are you single? You're single, huh? So you don't like having sex. Well, if you like having sex, you're not single. Because he that's joined to a harlot becomes one with the harlot. So you're not single. You're lying. You never had sex. You're lying. You're not having now. As a single Christian woman, you're lying. And and unless I'm gonna even I'm gonna even go a step further. 
all those devices that you got, you're one with them. See, God never intended for this to happen. You single and you bragging about it. You bragging about the fact that you're single. You're bragging that you are single. I don't even get that. I don't see that in the Bible. I don't see that that attitude in the Bible and bragging that I'm saying I'm single. If you're really single, don't have sex with nobody else for the rest of your life. Has God called you to be celibate for the rest of your life? Well, don't tell me that you're single. Your mind is not even single if God hasn't called you to that. If you don't have that in your spirit to never, ever have sex again, you're really not a single person. You're a person that should be married that's violating the laws of your natural being. And the natural, and let me say this. The laws of your natural being is there for you to build the kingdom of God up. I would even say singleness is an abnormality as a result of sin. And if you're spreading the gospel, God bless you. But that is not natural. We want to say that being single is natural and fornicating in your quote unquote singleness. We want to say that that's natural. But then we want to get down and, and all hard and heavy on the homosexuals. You can't have it both ways. And the bisexuals and the trisexuals and the metrosexuals and all these sexuals. Hey, if there's any woman, if there's any man out there, you already married and you're a Christian. And you didn't you you didn't get together on the foundation of the kingdom. Why do I say the kingdom? Because Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God in everything you do. Everything. And when he says seek first the kingdom, it means seek exclusively the welfare, prosperity, galvanization, and multiplication of the kingdom. That's what he meant when he said seek first. The king. When he says seek first the kingdom, it don't mean seek second something else. No, seek first the kingdom. And, and how do I know that? Because look what he says after that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Not because you're seeking them, but because those things are necessary tools for you to continue to keep seeking the kingdom. Just be tunnel vision when it comes to the kingdom. In your marriage, in your relationship with your friends, your enemies. And I know that's a whole nother study. I'm amazed at Christians that don't have any enemies. Everybody love them. You, you're not a Christian. From Jesus' own mouth. Everybody, why, do, why do everybody love you? Everybody didn't even love Jesus. <laughs> wow. But, you know, these people crack me up and they get all, all lofty and, 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 and huffing and puffing and looking all erudite on their pedestal. You know, come on down and, you know, just be humble. <laughs> you know, come on. No, everybody likes you. How? How? Everybody didn't even like Jesus in his own church, in his own local church. They didn't like him. Those are the a matter of fact, the people that was in his local church are the ones that hated him the most. The place that he was from, he did very few miracles there. He did less miracles there than any other place. But everybody like you, where are you from? Mm, that's really interesting. You must be doing something wrong. <laughs> oh. Hey. If you want a mate, those out there that's looking to get mate, all the, the reason why the divorce rate is is the same in the Christ, in Christianity as it is in the world is because we finding mates on the same premises. Hello, don't that make sense? The divorce rate in the church is just like it is outside the church. Why? Because we look for mates for the same purpose to build up the kingdoms of the world. That's why marriages can't stay together. And, 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 and for y'all that's together, don't pat yourself on the back too quick. A 
lot of y'all married because y'all still married just because y'all can't find nowhere else to go. <laughs> it's not funny. But don't perpetrate. Don't perpetrate just because you're still together. Very. And, and this is just just looking at statistics and with a prophetic and through a prophetic lens. If if the divorce rate among Christians in the so-called Christians and the world is the same. How many of those couples are married solely for the purpose of building up the kingdom of God and their love, their love multiplies for each other out of strictly doing that? You see what I'm saying? So... So even if you are still married and you're divorced from the object upon which God has bestowed his supreme regard, which is for his church to build up his kingdom in each and every individual family, you really are in a divorce. You really are. It's a divorce of sorts. Why? Because you're not connected to God. Y'all together as two people. But y'all not together as two people under God. You see what I'm saying? So divorce is, divorce is, there's a, the, the, you know, we throw around the word divorce. But the word, it's, I want to tell you something. It's, I know many married couples that don't even love each other. Married couples that don't even, and Christians, Christians, Christians. They don't love each other in the name of Jesus. Why do I say the name of Jesus? Because they call themselves Christians. They call themselves followers of Jesus. So in Jesus' name, they don't even love, uh, love each other. Woo! By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. When you love one another. We don't even love our wives and our husbands. We don't. Christians don't. And that's why these churches are so weak. That's why we put up all. And this is why so often these people have wicked leaders in front of them. Why? Because you have wicked leaders in the home that don't love each other. Now, I know some people would argue with you. Well, just because you don't love each other don't mean you're wicked. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> people think different ways. I've actually heard people say that. Just because a husband and wife who say, I love you till death do us part, just because they don't love each other don't mean that they're wicked. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Marriage is a convenience. You're married and you're in prison. You know, I went to I went to uh I went to a church last Sabbath, and I'm gonna tell you what church it was. It was Stratford. Somewhere in somewhere on a hundred and something, 19th Street, like right in Chicago. And I parked right in back of a car. And and, and he had a bumper sticker. This is a Christian now. And he was talking down a joke about marriage. And I was like, It's a witnessing tool, see? Now, this is, marriage is the main institution that God has given human beings, Christians, to build up his kingdom. And we making jokes about it? As Christians? That's like making a joke about Jesus. I don't get it, y'all. I don't get it. I don't get it. But this is Prophet 6, family prophet to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans. Stay married. If you like having sex and you need sexual stimulation, guess what that means? You're supposed to be married. Oh, yeah, that wasn't real spiritual. I know that don't sound real spiritual to you. 
Oh, it's got to be more. Yeah, it should be more than sex. But I'm just saying, that's a sign. If you need all kind of toys and all kind of men coming in and out your life, guess what that's supposed to mean? You're supposed to be married. You got children by three and four different men. Guess what that means? That you're supposed to be married. That's proof right there. I'm not going to even go deep on you right there. Prophecy, I, I'm out. <laughs> Praise the Lord.